Good evening. I'm delighted to be participating in this evening's debate, and I want to say what a privilege it is to be sharing the podium this evening with so eminent a scientist as Professor Ayala. Now, in any debate, it's critical that we begin by clearly defining our terms. And this is especially important with respect to tonight's topic, because there is such widespread misunderstanding of what intelligent design theory is. Taken in its broadest sense, ID is the study of justifiable design inferences. That is to say, it seeks to answer the question, when are we justified in inferring that design is the best explanation of some phenomenon? ID theory is applicable in a broad variety of fields, for example, cryptography, forensic science, intellectual property protection, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and so forth. Undoubtedly, one of the most sophisticated accounts of design inferences comes from the mathematician William Dembski in his book, The Design Inference, published by Cambridge University Press. Dembski argues that a design inference is justified when two conditions are met. First, the event to be explained is extraordinarily improbable, and secondly, the event corresponds to an independently given pattern. Dembski and other ID theorists have made the controversial claim that a design inference is warranted in the field of biology for biological organisms exhibit just that combination of high improbability and an independently given pattern that justifies an inference to intelligent design. Now this claim has drawn down upon ID theorists the wrath of the scientific establishment. Some, like Richard Dawkins, reject intelligent design out of anti-metaphysical or rather anti-religious motives. Significantly, however, this is not the source of Professor Ayala's disagreement with ID. For Professor Ayala is, like me, a confessing Christian who believes that there is an intelligent creator and designer of the world who has revealed himself in Jesus Christ. Accordingly, Professor Ayala believes that the world is indeed the product of intelligent design. Now, I realize this may be disappointing to those of you who are Richard Dawkins fans, but this is not a debate tonight between atheism and theism. Rather, the question is the detectability of intelligent design. ID theorists believe that intelligent design is detectable in biological organisms. Professor Ayala thinks it's not. On his view, God has, so to speak, so carefully covered his tracks by using random mutation and natural selection to create biological complexity that no inference to intelligent design is justified. Now, I have to admit that I don't know if a design inference in the field of biology is justified. But what I do know is that the typical arguments against intelligent design are either at best inconclusive or at worst fallacious. And that's what I hope to show tonight. Now in order to show that ID is not viable in the field of biology, Professor Ayala must do one of two things. Either one, challenge Dembski's criteria to a justifiable design inference, or else two, show that biological organisms do not meet those criteria. Dr. Ayala takes the second route. He claims that the evolution of complex life forms is not, in fact, unacceptably improbable given the mechanisms of random mutation and natural selection, and therefore no inference to design is justified. This serves to focus the debate exactly where the disagreement between ID theorists and Professor Ayala lies. In his book, Darwin's Gift to Science and Religion, Professor Ayala distinguishes three distinct aspects of the contemporary evolutionary paradigm. The first is what he calls evolution. Professor Ayala defines evolution as the process of change and diversification of living things over time. In other words, 
organisms other than the first are descended from earlier organisms with modifications. Second is what he calls evolutionary history. This is the reconstruction of the universal tree of life, showing how the various lineages branched off from one another. Notice that this second claim presupposes the thesis of common ancestry, the thesis that all organisms are descended from a single primordial ancestor rather than from a multiplicity of ancestors. Now, it's interesting that according to Professor Ayala, neither evolution nor evolutionary history or common ancestry represents Darwin's unique contribution to evolutionary theory. Contrary to popular impression, evolutionary theories of life were common prior to Darwin. Rather, Darwin's contribution lay in point three. The mechanism behind evolutionary change is natural selection operating on random variations in living things. It is this mechanism which Darwin used to explain the adaptedness of organisms to their environment without the necessity of a designing intelligence. Accordingly, we can call this third point Darwinism. Now this makes it clear just where ID theorists and Professor Ayala part company. It is not on evolution or even common ancestry, but on Darwinism. In fact, prominent ID theorists like geneticist Michael Denton and biochemist Michael Behe espouse the same view of evolutionary history as Professor Ayala. They agree that all life is descended from a common primordial ancestor. What they deny is that the mechanisms of random variation and natural selection are adequate to explain this evolution of biological complexity. In tonight's debate, therefore, I'm going to focus our attention on the mechanisms of random mutation and natural selection. I'm going to resist mightily the temptation to discuss the thesis of common ancestry and Professor Ayala's arguments for it. I'll leave those aside in order to focus on the Darwinian mechanisms.